23.4. The drainage density in B, okay, is high or low? Okay, so drainage density, guys, of course, that is the number of streams per unit area, okay? So you basically determine, you basically look at the number of streams. How many streams are there? Oh, how many channels are there? How many tributaries? How many, you know, uh, channels, okay? That's what we're talking about, okay? So, of course, uh, because B has a lot of streams, a lot of channels, there's a lot of tributaries, so, um, so of course, the drainage density is high, okay? So, we're going with high for 3.4. It's high. There's a lot of streams there, okay? So, it's high, going for 2.3.4. Um, and then 2.3.5, determine the stream order at x ha stream order guys okay at x now for the stream order i think it's quite important uh, that first of all you are you you, you know the rules and uh, so the principles and um, you obey them and take time guys okay because Sometimes it can be frustrating, I know, because they give you a lot of um, a lot of streams, so you'll be counting and counting and counting endlessly. Uh, you have to have patience here yeah? and trust uh, the process. Okay, so I'm just uh, going to try to um, draw this. Um, I hope I will draw it correctly. Um, yeah, guys, please let um, more people know about this. Uh, there's a lot more coming, guys. I have a lot in stock for you. Um, you know, uh, even parents, okay? Please um, uh, let your children know. Uh, that I'm here okay I'm here and I'm going to do all uh, that I have to ensure that they pass okay and um, so if you would uh, tune into this um, if I would get at least a hundred guys at least a hundred for now um, this would um, uh, this uh, this channel will be exposed to a lot of students out there. Okay, that's what we want, right? Um, so there we go. Okay, I didn't draw other streams, guys, because like what's really important, really, it's is what uh, is the streams that are on the northern on the north part of this point okay even this i didn't have to draw this part okay so we're looking at uh, all the streams that are on the northern part of this okay right okay um so what's the rules okay so first of all the rules um you always um start working from uh the out uh start working outwards okay and you work towards or you work inwards towards the towards this point in this case x okay so you allocate one uh, to each and every one uh, one of the streams that are on the outside and whenever you have a confluence okay when the stream when the uh, the stream allocated one and another stream allocated one meet at that confluence that um, the stream order increases by two okay at the confluence okay at the meeting okay and whenever you have different numbers meeting up so like two and three maybe always the bigger number wins okay so four and three that will be four okay so on and so on that's the rules really so let's start allocating ones uh to the streams that are on the outside so that's one that's one 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 you should get these guys uh, these are not really difficult. Just stick to the rules. One, 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 
one. Okay, so I've allocated one to each and every stream here. Now, let's look at the confluences now. So, this um, stream meets with this stream at this point. Okay, so one and one are meeting up. And so that's going to be two. Okay. Um, one and one meeting up here. That's two. One and one. That's two. Um, one and one. It's two. Uh, one and one. It's two there. And I would suggest that you circle your confluences so that you indicate that you're done with them. Two. It's one and one. That's two. One and one. That's two. Okay. Let's carry on. Two and one. Okay. This is two and one. What did we say? The bigger number wins. So it's two. Okay. Then two and two. Okay. That's three. Okay. Same number. We go up by one. Okay. One and two. Two. Okay. Um, two and one. Two. Two and two, what is it? Three. Okay. Three, uh, two, that's two. And three, three. Okay. Two and one. Okay. That's still two. Three and two, that is still three. Right. I hope you guys, uh, um, uh, do understand what I'm, what I'm doing here. Then this two and that two, they are making up three. Okay, right? Right. And then three and three, what is that? Go up by one, that is four. Okay, and four and three. Okay, you have to be careful and be patient. That is four. So that goes in there as four. Okay, so uh, that means this is the fourth order. Okay, uh, that's the fourth stream order. Okay, so we write fourth uh, order. Okay, that is our answer there, 2.3.5. And then 2.3.6, explain the relationship between stream order and drainage density in B. Okay, and um, of course, here the relationship, of course, uh, we have... A higher drainage density, therefore a higher stream order. Okay, higher, uh, or, or you can say the higher the the drainage density, the higher the stream order. Order. Okay. Um. So. Let's move on then. Let's move on to 2.3.7. 2.3.7 says, explain how the slope, okay, that is the gradient, and permeability, okay, permeability is, um, is the ability of the soil to allow water particles to enter, okay, to allow them through. And permeability of underlying rock um, influence the drainage density um, in B. Okay, so what happened there? What was the slope like? What was the permeability like uh, such that that led to this um, this drainage density that is high? Okay, so we have to explain that. Oh, uh, that is four marks. So two much, two marks each. Okay, so this is what I would have written. Okay, um, so I would say. Okay, so first of all, we know that when a slope is steep okay when a slope is steep when it rains the rainwater is forced to slide down because of gravity okay so it is it cannot infiltrate okay cannot infiltrate doesn't have the time um, it's immediately forced to slide down okay so infiltration whenever there's no infiltration guys whenever there's no infiltration then there's going to be uh, erosion okay 
and erosion is associated with surface runoff okay so when your water is running on top of the surface then it's going to erode it's going to dig it's going to dig for more channels um, and therefore more channels meaning that higher drainage density okay uh, please follow me at um, science guy rsa 99 at uh, tiktok and please subscribe guys please subscribe please there's, lo there's a lot more coming okay so we are saying that if not if infiltration does not occur in that instance then you have if uh if if the water particles do not go through the soil they are going to run on top of the soil that is surface runoff and that is going to lead them digging or removing material that is erosion that is going to lead them opening new channels and therefore increasing the drainage density that means more streams that are uh, that are going to be opened okay so uh so we are saying here the slope uh, must have been steep uh, because this uh, would have uh, forced the water particles to slide down the slope uh, due to gravity okay then become surface runoff eroding or removing material along the way okay uh, this opens more channels and hence Uh, higher drainage density density okay that is for the slope the gradient okay then let's head on uh, to the uh, permeability let's think about it if the soil let's say the soil is impermeable okay if it is impermeable that means it's not going to allow okay maybe it's made up of like very like compact tightly stacked particles that do not allow that do not have any space for water particles to go through in this case it is impermeable impermeable so this means that water uh, would not have been able to go through but rather would have stayed on top of the surface what do you have what do you call water running on top of the surface call it surface runoff and surface runoff is, is associated with erosion and erosion does what digs open the uh, channels that is what erosion is and therefore that increases the drainage density okay just have to think about it first okay i hope i'm not too quick i really hope so okay let me know in the comments um so we are saying that the soil must have been impermeable okay could be clay or maybe they built a road there or something um, whenever an area is built up um, you usually have surface runoff so soil must have been um, impermeable as this uh, would have meant and uh, the water or uh, rain water um, as uh, as this would have meant the rain water um, disallowed okay being disallowed to uh, go through the soil Ok, 
okay uh, but rather um, move on top of the soil on top of the soil um, which means that it's being surface runoff this increases increases you're going to write increases erosion and hence uh, opening new channels increasing drainage density ha hi teachers ha you can't get me wrong with this one i ha 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 i got full marks here no one can disagree with me on this one hi i'm sure about this one okay 2.3.7 full marks guys this is how you explain it like go all out okay when you explain go all out okay you will get full marks trust me trust me okay trust in me guys trust in me okay so that's uh full marks uh so that was uh 2.3.7 so now we head on to 2.4 2.4 guys 2.4 2.4 2.4 what do we have refer to the sketches below on river capture or stream pirates okay cool so this is river capture fine there's before river capture and after river capture okay um so again I, I i talk a lot about the orientation guys um they always change the orientation um of these two rivers so be careful okay so in this uh, in these two diagram what can we interpret um first of all we can see that okay they are separated by this watershed but eventually after a river capture uh, that watershed has been eroded okay material has been removed there but which river stone uh, the rivers of which river so as you can see here um a is the one to uh, to erode uh, must have been the one to erode the watershed headwardly so headward erosion and um so it eroded going backwards towards its source and it eventually caught uh, river b so river a has to be uh, the captor stream or the one that steals the waters of river b okay so it has to be the one that has been uh, strong enough to erode the watershed okay and then store it with water so okay okay now see what's happening here all right so again guys before you answer just interpret like um you don't have to be out loud with that in your exams just think about this think about it and then head into the questions okay let's look at 2.4.1 what do they have for us which river a or b has more erosive power ha guys it has to be a okay it has to be a because a was able to steal the waters of b okay through headward erosion it had it moved removed the uh the material in what in the watershed so it had more erosive power so it's a 2.4.2 it's one mark so give one reason evident in the sketches to support your answer well because a captured um stream b okay according to the sketch okay so it must have been um it must had removed hell it must have removed 
uh, the material uh, making up the watershed. I like to be excessive in my answers, so yeah, don't worry about your answer maybe. Of course, you got the correct uh, concepts or the correct words that they were looking for. It must have been uh, removed. It must have, it must have removed the material making up the watershed. Okay, so in order to do so, of course, it must have had um, more erosive power. Uh, Two point four point three. Identify features C and D. C. What is C, guys? C. That's um, that's the elbow, right? That's the elbow of capture. That is what. That is where it happened. That is where the stealing occurred. And D. Uh, that has to be the wind gap. So C, elbow of capture. Elbow of capture. Um, and D, wind gap. Okay, wind gap. Okay. 2.4.4. Give one characteristic of feature D. Okay, feature D. Feature D, remember we said that it's the wind gap. What's happening in the wind gap? Okay, what can you see? Okay, of course in the wind gap, um, you can see uh, that there's no uh, river or water. Uh, you can say it's a dry area. Okay, dry area, there's nothing anymore. There's no supply, it's cut off. Um, so that's what we see, okay, in, uh, in the wind gap, okay. 2.4.5 In a paragraph of approximately eight lines, describe the changes in river, that river E will experience, will experience, so river E, that is the misfit stream, of course, uh, that river E will experience after river capture has taken place, Okay. What changes uh, would um, E have? Okay. So first of all, yo, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, there's going to be um, a smaller volume of water. Water. A uh, supply has been cut off. Okay, because supply has been cut off. Now you write it, of course, in sentences, guys, in paragraph. Okay, you don't write these brackets. Okay, there's a, there's going to be a smaller volume of water because the supply of water from the captured river has been cut off, and uh, this uh, will result in less fish. Okay, it's going to be less fish. Or you can say maybe the ecosystem will be disrupted uh, due to the the small volume of water. Okay. Uh, now, but what else? Um, wind as an agent of erosion. Will dominate along with um, weak um, water erosion. Okay, because the smaller volume, guys, smaller uh, volume uh, of water there. Um, what else? Okay, so um, you can also. Um, Let's talk about biodiversity within the 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 the, the di biodiversity um, in the river channel. Remember, guys, there are ecosystems there. There's fish, there's animals and plants living there. Okay, and so of course, in the river, will be disrupted. Because 
the environment is no longer the same now. Okay, the environment has been altered, has been changed. Okay. Um, what else, guys? What else? What else? Um, we can talk about like this is already eight marks, right? Um, can also talk about uh, the discharge it's decreased. Um, but because we are talking about the characteristic of the river itself, I don't think like the the impacts like your uh, maybe the the water sports. There's no longer going to be water sports like the impact like your farmers will or factories or industries will close because there's less water, so on and so on. People will not have enough water for domestic use. Um, so I don't think we can talk about that here. We just uh, talk about the river itself, like its characteristics. Um, so there's a smaller volume of water in a bigger uh, river channel okay so this is what i would have written guys uh let me know what you guys wrote uh what you guys think okay um oh we actually don't have 2.4.6 so that's it oh uh, we have 2.5 actually so let me move this we have 2.5 so okay um we have a little extract here Refer to the extract below on catchment and river management. Okay, so the title goes Alien plants are the greatest threat to Cape Town's water security. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's read. Let's read um, alien plants. Okay, so we have an asterisk spell there, of course, and uh, that would mean that you, they are giving you a uh, uh, a definition of an alien plant okay an alien plant is a foreign plant uh usually uh these usually grow of course uh they are not native they are not indigenous they grow um, in other countries usually from other countries and usually they use a lot of water they consume a lot of water they compete for sunlight with our local um, indigenous um, plants okay okay and then Yes, there's a glossary there. Okay, so alien plants are possibly the greatest threat to Cape Town's water security. The roots of plants absorb groundwater, okay? The current water loss due to alien plants is more than 100 million liters, ooh, which is nearly 20% of what Cape, uh, Cape Townians are currently using daily. Okay, wow. To address water security, the city of Cape Town plans to extract water from aquifers in addition to existing dams. Okay, so dams are already uh, the solution. So we are planning to extract water from aquifers. Now, aquifers, of course, these are uh, rocks uh, that um, have water within them. Okay, so you can extract water from a rock, actually. So they like have uh, rivers running inside of them. Um, however, the plan to extract groundwater is experiencing challenges due to alien plants absorbing groundwater in the mountain catchment areas, okay? Okay, already, already we have a problem there. So, okay, so, um, extracting groundwater by drilling boreholes into aquifers to add uh, to the existing water supply without addressing the clearing of clear of alien plants will cause a bigger water supply problem in future yes that's true uh, catchment rest uh, restoration okay which is repair is the solution to water security okay and alien clearing programs are key to this restoration okay so that's these are the solutions however Underfunding and inefficiencies are hampering the implementation of alien clearing programs in the catchment areas. Mm. Okay, so we have a problem clearing. Uh, we cannot even clear or remove these alien plants because of underfunding. We're not getting um, enough funds in order to make this happen, put this in action, implement this. 
um, and also the inefficiency. So inefficiency is that means working um, slowly. Okay, so things are really taking like a long time. Okay, to 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 care. Okay. Remember everything, every project that has to be done, guys. It has to uh, pass certain requirements. Okay, it has to follow a, a certain procedure. So inefficiencies, of course, slowing things down. Yeah, this makes it even even harder to to implement this. So we do have the solution, but we have a problem that's standing um, on our way. Okay, so this is how I read, guys, throughout. Okay, I'm imagining this. Okay, um, what are they saying? Putting it in my own words. Um, you know, being um, in their POV, in their point of view. Um, so yeah, rest uh, restoring and maintaining our catchments in a healthy state are essential uh, for water security in Cape Town and surrounding region. The threat of alien plants of wa uh, to water security will not go away and will only become a greater problem. Okay. Okay, uh, 2.5.1 says how much water is lost due to alien plants according to the extract okay how much water is it is lost um so on your first paragraph um the we, we do have a sentence there saying the current water loss due to alien plants is more than 100 million liters okay so according to the extract it's more than i'll write that down more than 100 million liters okay they are not saying it's 100 exactly it's more than that okay 100 that's what i would have written it's one mark 2.5.2 give two plans in the extract that the cape town municipality intends to use to improve water security okay and there is two of them okay so first of all um we plan there's a plan to extract water from the aquifers okay but also there's another plan to remove okay so first of all uh, the plan to remove alien plants okay from catchment areas this reduces the loss uh, because it really is not going to be effective if we um, extract water from aquifers, uh, aquifers that are, you will find in the catchment areas. We are extracting less water because of alien plants. If we would first remove alien plants and then extract water, now that would be effective. We would get the maximum amount of water that uh, we deserve. So remove alien plants from catchment areas okay then second plan extract uh, water from aquifers that is the solutions I see guys um, um, is there another solution maybe that I might have overlooked mm. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, boo. Yes, there we go. Yeah. That's it, bro. That is the, the, the that's it. That's it. That's uh catchment restoration there. And um yeah. So that's the 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 the, the two uh, solutions to water security. Okay. And then two point five point three. According to the extract, what are the challenges that are faced when implementing these plans? Okay. So, um, so the challenges that are faced when we're implementing these, it's first of all, it's underfunding. Okay. Um, okay. Um, underfunding. makes it difficult to implement
to implement these projects okay these projects okay we need them you need money guys you need there are people that are going to work there of course they need to be paid um there's, a, there's research that's going to be um taken that needs uh funding so of course um if you're under funding then that's not going to happen so under funding that's the first one and the second one is inefficiencies okay um okay inefficiencies so um uh inefficiencies so efficiencies or slow process or procedure to implement this uh, makes it uh, difficult or hard um, to do it on time time okay <clears throat> um this is what i would have written i don't know about you guys um let me know uh is there another is there another challenge that i might have missed there to implement okay your inefficiencies or slow processes make it hard to implement this meaning which the alien clearing program okay slow it's very slow um so that also makes it hard okay um let me move this so okay so 2.5.4 there describe the positive impact of the removal of alien plants on the volume of water in the dam okay <coughs> so of course um, because uh, my English teacher always told me never uh, start a, a sentence with because <laughs> oh man she's probably yeah disappointed now so yeah so because um dams rely on rivers and rainwater and the rivers rely on the catchment area and rainwater okay i'm not going to be specific um alien plants um indirectly influence okay let's say alien plants consuming more water uh in the catchment area reduces the supply to the river and hands to the dam uh, and hence the volume of the dam volume of water in the dam yes yes okay in the dam yeah so that is 2.5.4 uh, a and then b the water table okay um because again <laughs> because uh plants okay um uh, absorb groundwater plant roots absorb groundwater water 
uh, this uh, reduces or lowers let's say lower I like the word lower lowers the upper part of the groundwater which is the table the water table so there we go guys that's a and that's B okay set on to the last question oh finally when 2.5.5 Okay, so 2.5.5, uh, what are they saying here? Yeah. Uh, 2.5.5, why will the removal of alien plants improve the biodiversity of the catchment area? Ooh, I love this one. Ooh, okay, so why then? How is that going to happen? So we're saying that uh, the removal... Of alien plants will reduce the competition for sunlight. Let's start with sunlight. Okay, this. Uh, this means more plants would, would have greater access to the sunlight and hence will thrive. And photosynthesize. Okay. Um, okay, and then of course that means that, like other uh, animals, like your bees, your pollen pollinators, like all the other. Uh, animals uh, that or insects that pollinate these that rely on plants um, and flowers to eat okay of course that means that they will thrive there okay uh, this will also reduce the competition let's say end okay. I like the word end uh, so instead of reduce or end, okay, let's rather write end, okay, will end the competition, okay, maybe not end, okay, but yeah, but this will uh, also reduce or end the competition uh, for nutrients and water, okay, um, as Okay, let me put this in brackets as alien plants uh, are known for longer roots. And hence huge consumption. Okay. So this will reduce uh, the competition for nutrients and water, um, allowing indigenous plants to uh, become healthy because of the nutrients and thrive. Okay. By this I mean like uh, populate. Um, inviting more insects, pollinators, or herbivores to these catchment areas 
and thus uh, improving the biodiversity. of the catchment area okay that's it that th this is it guys okay this is it let me know uh teachers what would you um rate me okay on this okay how many marks would you give me it's actually out of four marks right yeah out of four marks okay so um how so the next video will be based on the map work okay and yeah we'll move on to paper two then right thank you guys please subscribe please like please share this to other people to other students